Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk some November favorites. Here's where I'll tell you there is a ton of stuff that I've tried over the last six weeks. <laughs> and I, I've had so much stuff come into my collection that I can't talk about all of it today. I will continue to check back with you with reviews and, uh, you know, recommendations and things like that. But these are the sorts of things, some of them are new, some of them are not new. The things that I couldn't keep myself from reaching for all month long. All right, I'm going to start with skincare. My skin has been suffering a little bit. Uh, weather is cooler. We're in the, I would say right now we're in the 30s. But like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, we were in the 20s for the high for the day and it was just bitter cold. And this is just the beginning of the cold weather because probably come January, we're going to be in like a high of the teens and my skin is just going to be like, ah, moisture, we need moisture. And the one thing that has really been helping, there are two things, but one of them that I have been loving is this. This is from the Peach Slices um, skincare line, kind of like the baby sister to Peach and Lily. This is the Snail Rescue Blemish Busting Toner. Now, I don't get it because it's blemish busting. I get it because there's snail mucin in here, and this is crazy hydrating. I love this. And it has 95% snail mucin concentrate. Now, I know for a lot of people, if you are not a K-Beauty fan or a J-Beauty fan, the idea of... <laughs> snail concentrate you're like Ugh. <laughs> actually I love it I've been using products with snail mucin in them for years so this is great for fighting blemishes super hydrating gently exfoliating and it helps to target dark spots so I do have dark spots but this is what I've been putting on my face like a couple of like little dashes let me just show you it's got this little hole here and you can just you know that's one dash I would do this and then press it into my skin, do another one and press it in. And it is like beautifully hydrating. Smells like absolutely nothing. Doesn't feel kind of sticky or greasy. And once it's absorbed in, it's just like your skin is like, it's, it's as if you were putting hyaluronic acid on your face. Just a little plumper, just a little bit bouncier, just a little bit more hydrated. And I love that. And I have been using this morning and night. Now, another product that I have been using morning and night and I've gone through a lot of it. This is something that has a lot of hyaluronic acid in it, and it's this. This is the new Great Skin from Merit. This is a product that they sent to me in PR. It squirts out like this. This has more of a, kind of like a dry oil feel to it when you first um, put it on. Also doesn't smell like anything, but the minute I start putting this on, it, it has a little bit of a, oily feel not in a bad way um but after like two minutes it's it's not greasy it's not oily it's just completely like gone into your skin but it leaves the most beautiful glowy skin on the days that i'm not wearing makeup and i just want to look like i have gorgeous beautiful youthful skin i have been loving this one thing that i learned a while ago is that you never want to put anything with hyaluronic acid in it on your dry skin you want your skin to be Damp. So you could take like a hydrating mist, you could do it straight out of the shower or right after you've washed your face and your face is still slightly damp. Or you could use a product like this, you know, make sure that there is something there because if you put hyaluronic acid over your skin, I remember hearing the doctors, I think it was Dr. Shaw from Dr. Lee talk about this, that if you do that on dry skin, it can actually make your skin drier. So I always put this on after I have like a, a facial mist on or um, I usually use this straight out of the shower in the morning and then again at night. And the fact that I've had it for five weeks and I'm a quarter of the way through it, I have really been liking this. The other thing that is so great is that you are getting a larger size. Um, this is not your one ounce size, this is 1.7 ounces. And the fact that it's only $38, despite the fact that they sent this to me in PR, I could see myself repurchasing this because it has really been making my skin um, glowy and hydrated. It's the hydration that I need right now because the weather is getting so much colder. This has been beautiful. Um, this has niacinamide in it, cacao seed extract. It has Japanese gold thread root in it and it has hyaluronic acid, two different types of hyaluronic acid. So I have been loving this. All right, I've been using this like skincare even though it's kind of like a lip product. Okay, I got two tubes of this, uh, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. And look how much I've gone through. 
<laughs> this is the balm.com in Swiss Miss. This is Glossier's balm.com. It's the only thing I have on my lips right now. I love this so much. So it, it's a kind of brown. Smells just like Swiss Miss. I mean, just like Swiss Miss. And it has a really pretty um, brown tone to it, but there's just a hint of rose. So it has been one of those products that if I'm wearing a bolder eye look and I don't know what to pair with it, Swiss Miss. And I went on Cyber Monday when they were selling all of their balm.coms for $5. I was like, I'm gonna stock up. It was so sad. They were out. There was no more Swiss Miss. And this is kind of like giving me similar vibes to last year's cookie butter. I loved it, cookie butter. And I bought two tubes of it, and I think I have one tube left that I haven't gotten into because I'm like, say that it's so good. I have another tube of Swiss Miss that I'm probably gonna hang on to for a while. But these kind of more chocolatey or tan tones in the balm.com are amazing. The formula is, is not such my favorite. I, I have the mango, I have the coconut, I have the lavender honey. I have like a whole bunch of them and I ordered more on Black Friday. So I have a rose coming, more coconut, more mango and the berry. I've never tried the berry. So I was thinking, you know, since I'm liking this slight tint, I don't use this just on my lips, but I start out with it here and any excess goes on like my cuticles or the backs of my knuckles. Cause now that the weather's cold, all of me is dry, all of me is chapped. And the ones that I have by my bedside are clear. Um, and so I will put a thin layer over my under eye area. I'll you know finish my skincare, get into bed, put a layer of balm.com on my lips. Um, and then I will slug my under eyes with it just to make sure my under eyes don't get too dry and craggly in this cold, cold, cold season. But this Swiss Miss, oh, favorite. I cannot stop reaching for it. And I've had it for a handful of weeks and look, the tube is almost half gone. Okay, but I love this. Earlier this month, my Lisa Eldridge package arrived and every time I do a Lisa Eldridge video, I usually pull out her foundation. And this seamless skin foundation is probably the best foundation in my entire collection. This is beautiful. I wear a shade number two. It's out of everything that I have, this is the perfect, not the closest, the perfect skin match for me. Other things can be a little too yellow. Other things can be a little too pink. Some things are too deep, maybe a little gray. This is absolutely perfect. And the other thing that I like about this is that this looks like skin. Um, it's buildable. It's kind of medium coverage, but it is buildable. And I, I know that this is kind of an expensive product, but this is the one thing that the minute I run out of it, I will go and get another because it's just that good. Now I've had it for more than a year in my collection, but I wanted to make sure to let you know, I have been reaching for this nonstop this month. And part of it was because I pulled it out for that Lisa Eldridge video. And then I was just like, oh yeah, this is amazing. I was using it last month too. Great stuff. Other things, I can't stop reaching for the minimalist from Merit. <laughs> This stick is what I'm wearing today. This is what I do on days that I'm like, don't have time, gotta go. And I'm not wearing concealer, I'm only wearing this. So this is what I'm wearing today. And this is the shade Slip. It blends beautifully into my skin tone. It is just a little bit yellow. Um, I'm really kind of curious as to um, the lightest shade. This is the second lightest shade. Sorry, it's not Slip, it's Silk. I'm kind of curious to see what the next lighter shade is. And if I ever find it in store somewhere, I'm gonna swatch it. But I think that this is kind of like the best shade for me. But I love this thing so much. I've been leaning on this really heavily. I wouldn't be surprised if sooner than later I run out of it because <laughs> It has been a, a favorite, favorite, favorite. Another product that I've had for a while, it's new this year though, is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter. Okay, I'm not wearing it today, but this is the concealer that I was like, okay, I'm trying this new Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palette, the Myth palette, which is all purples. And if I don't properly conceal my under eyes, purple eyeshadows really bring out those dark spots and pretty soon it looks like I got punched. And that's not what I'm going for, but this Faux Filter, First of all, mega coverage. This is the second lightest shade in 1N1. So it's the neutral light or neutral fair shade. Look how, how much pigment there is. That is one dot from the doe foot and it's still going. Like I could blend this all over the top of my hand. You wouldn't see a single sunspot. You wouldn't see a single freckle. It is like all the pigment and then some. So, I mean, <laughs> do you see? 
It is very, very pigmented. But what I like about this, and I don't know if you've heard me talk about it before, is that it's great under my eyes. Usually things that are this heavy duty can make my under eyes look dry or craggly. Um, this is radiant without being glowy. This is hydrating. This is not drying. This doesn't kind of sink into my crinkles. This doesn't accentuate any dryness that I have. This is just beautiful. I don't know what miracle is going on, but I really like this. The one thing that's kind of bumming me out though, and, and I'm probably just kind of cranking on it, is that it have, I haven't had it that long. Do you see this little line right here? This is a stress crack. There's another one on the other side right here. And this is just because I've been opening and closing it and I don't, I'm waiting for when this cracks. That's the only part that's bumming me out, but I use this, anytime I reach for concealer, I've been reaching for this. First of all, it's a perfect shade for under my eyes. This is what I reach for on the days that I need coverage, but I don't have time for corrector and concealer because this is so pigmented. It's like all my sins are forgiven with one tiny dot. Love, 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 love this stuff. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. I started reaching for this again. This is the Ambient Lighting Power Powder from Hourglass. This is the shade Diffuse Light. I'm wearing this today. I absolutely love it. I like to use it on a smaller, kind of pinpointed brush like this. This is a brush that Wayne Goss no longer makes. It's the O2, but it works good like this, like corners of my nose. If I wanna get the rest of my face, I have been picking it up on like just like a little velour puff you know, hitting center of the face. And it's just been super easy and super pretty where I get a little bit of glow, but not too much. And it makes my skin look kind of airbrushed and diffused and it sets my makeup without being heavy. I definitely feel like I have a giant divot right here and I wouldn't be surprised if sooner than later I will have gone through this. My goal is once I finish using this, I'm gonna find all of my hourglass ambient lighting palettes, the holiday palettes that have diffused light in there. I don't wanna go and get another full size one of these when I still have diffused light in one of those smaller little square pans in a palette. I wanna finish using what I have, but this has been a beloved product for 15 years and I still love it and I still wear it and I'm still super, super excited by it. This has been a huge surprise to me. This is the One Powder Wonder from Beauty Pie. This is in a shade that I never thought I would pick up. It's called Exquisite Light. I'm used to the One Powder Wonder that looks white. This is Uberlucent Universal. This is kind of a baked setting powder that has just a small amount of luminosity to it. It, it. it looks frightening in the pan because it's white, but it is the most lightweight. It is the most seamless, traceless setting powder that I use for underneath my eyes. And I love it. This is, I think my second compact. I'm about to open up my third. I don't usually go through powder this quickly because I have so much, it just kind of, oh, let me reach for this one. Oh, let me reach for that one. But when I keep going through, like in two years to have gone through two of these, it definitely means it's a favorite. So I was a little curious about this. This is the one that I would consider my favorite for this month. And this exquisite light, I mean, it had the embossing of beauty pie on here, but it's gone. <laughs> I've been using it that much. You see how shiny it is? There's a little bit of color to this. I would say that the other one, you know, I can swirl my finger around it and you can hardly see it. But this one here, there's pigment, there is shine and shimmer, and you can use it as like a really soft highlight. But you know what I have been doing all month long? And this was kind of like, I, I think I started last month where I was using it as highlight and then I just kind of dusted it all over the face and then to wash my giant rougher brush. This is my number 22. And I put it in here, knocked off the excess and just kind of used it like a finishing powder all over. And do you see this? It's not too glowy, it's not too blingy, it's this. So if you don't like glowy kind of skin, you're not gonna like this. But this is definitely one step up from these kind of glowy ambient lighting powders. This is like ambient lighting powder on steroids. And I really, really love
love this. Look at that. Um, you can use it targeted in your inner corner, uh, under the arch of your brow, um, on your cheek as a highlight. But if you get a really big fluffy brush and you just kind of lightly dust it, like go hit your cheekbones first and then just kind of lightly dust the rest, the excess on the rest of your face, you get this glowy thing going on here. And I've been loving this. So much fun. Another thing from Beauty Pie that I have been addicted to another product that has lost the impression in the pan is this. This is the Awesome Bronze. This is the lightest shade in Sunnyside. This is um, the lightest bronzer that they have, but this is a refillable package. I love that. You just get another one of these, go straight in here. I like that they're making refillable packaging. And this has been a huge hit with me. It used to have kind of like a, a leaf pattern on it, but <laughs> I don't even know what it was anymore because it's it's so gone. I've been in here so much. Love this. And the thing that I like about this, I think you can see a little bit of it there, is it's slightly satin. It's not a complete like flat matte. It's not too dark. It's a little bit on the warm side. I wouldn't say that it's orange, but it is a little bit warmer than other ones. But it has kind of like that skin-like quality and that skin like look. So the subtle satin sheen to this is really lovely, but I wouldn't say that it's glowy. It's nowhere near as glowy as the exquisite light powder. I love this, but this is definitely more subdued, but it's not a flat matte. And that's the thing that I really like about it. Also love the packaging and I like that there's no actual snap closure. It's just a magnet. Fantastic. So when this next product debuted, I instantly went gaga for the packaging. I thought it looked beautiful, but I was like, there's no way I'm paying that price. No way I'm not doing it. I wanted it, but I was like, mm, but do I really want to pay that price for it? And then I picked it up during the Sephora sale and I cannot stop wearing it. I'm wearing it today. This is the Luminous Matte Rosy Blush from Gucci. And I have the shade Rosy Beige. So pretty. So pretty. So I like how it, it's it's rose it's a little bit tan i mean that whole rosy beige is a great descriptor and when you blend it it's just a little bit it's not too much and i think that's what i've really been liking about this i am forever over blushing and i look like i'm obviously a child of the 80s but i really look like i'm embracing that or i look like a clown <laughs> you know i got clown cheeks going on and this this shade especially on my fair skin this one is fantastic. This rosy beige shade. It's number five rosy beige. I love it. And look at this Gucci packaging. Oh, be still in my heart. I feel like Gucci does some of the most luxurious packaging. And after trying this, I'd be really curious to try the Gucci bronzer or, or, or other powder products from Gucci because this is so finely milled and so beautiful. It also has a slightly luminous quality to it. It's not a flat matte but it's also not like glowy, glowy. Do you see there's a slight shine to this? This just looks gorgeous. And there are days that I wear this and a little bit of bronzer and I don't feel like I need a highlight because it has just a little bit of dimensionality to it. It's not shiny. It's not even, it's hardly even satin, but it has just a little something to it that makes it look like your skin. It's gorgeous. Another product I cannot stop reaching for and I've used so much this month is this. This is the M Cosmetics So Soft Contour. I have one of their bronzers. Let me grab it for you. Okay, these look very different. This right here is the lightest shade that M makes. This is the shade called Summer. It blends effortlessly. Finger, sponge, brush, like angel kisses, and it's like blended beautifully. I picked up this shade right here. This is Tara, and I knew that I was looking <laughs> for uh, a little more dimension to my face. Um, pandemic has not been good to me. I've gained weight. I didn't want to gain weight and I have not had enough fortitude to make better decisions. And so I've kind of stopped gaining weight, but I haven't lost what I gained. And I'm like, well, I, I need a little contour, a little bring my cheekbones back, you know, like high a little bit of the turkey wobble under here. And this shade right here is beautiful. It looks really intense when you first swipe it on because it can, it can look really heavy. But do you see how it blends out? I was worried that this shade in Tara would be too dark for me because I, I would think that's ah, too much, but it's perfection. And I, I purchased it, been thinking about it for more than a year, but I have two of the So Soft blushes 
um, a lighter shade and a deeper shade. Um, I, I think this formula is probably, probably the best stick formula I've tried in bronzer or in blush. I love it better than anything else in my collection that comes kind of like in this uh, firm format. I think this is just the best for blending, for ease of use. And I think this color is really great. If you're looking for a warm bronzer, I really like summer, but if you want a sculpting shade, kind of like more of a contour situation, this shade in Terra is amazing. Let's talk some eyeshadow. The one palette that I reached for the most up until halfway through this month was this. And this is a palette I built myself of all my Sydney Grace shadows. Um, I think I might have used it in a Get Ready With Me once this month, but I, I was using this for daily looks for work. And what I do is I go through my collection of singles and I'll do trios. I love a smaller color story. So having this set up with kind of like these rosy tones, these warmer neutrals, and then these greens, it kind of gave me the opportunity to play in colors that I like for this season, but only three, you know, a light, a medium, and a deep. And I could do a really fast, really easy look, and I have been loving this. I feel like a lot of my shadow singles have just been sitting there for a while, and taking the time to create my own palette every month has probably been one of the best things I have done, and I've really fallen in love with some of these shades. Um, and some of them get a ton, a ton, a ton of use, but I really have loved this. I placed an order this month from Lisa Eldridge and I ordered all five of her new eyeshadow palettes and her lipsticks. And these eyeshadow palettes, huh, so excited, so delighted by these. I love all five of them. I've tried all five of them. I will link my Lisa Eldridge playlist for you right here. And um, I will have links to all of the videos of these in the description box down below, but there were two two that I loved so much that brought me like a lot of joy. One of them I wore like every time I went to work, um, I wore this, this is Vega. And this was kind of surprising. I love cooler eyeshadows. I am wearing some cooler shadows today, but it hasn't been until probably the last two years that I started wearing cooler eyeshadows. For the longest time, you couldn't get me away from a neutral, especially a warm neutral. That is still kind of like my safe go-to place works really well with my skin tone. It's what I know. It's what I can do quickly. But I want to get to the same place with cool eyeshadows. And this palette here in Vega is absolutely magical. I love it. My favorite shades in here are these two. This is French Grey and this is Moon Swirl. And what I do when I gotta go is I put Moon Swirl in the crease and I put this over the lid and I call it a day. And they're so pretty and they're, I mean, there's a lot of other really great shades in here, but I've fallen in love with this palette. I couldn't stop reaching for it and I wore it for work. I worked three days a week and this is what I wore every single day I went to work. The other Lisa Eldridge palette that brought me so much joy is this one. This is the Sorcery palette. Okay. I will tell you blue and green put me way outside of my comfort zone. If I'm gonna wear a green, I'm gonna wear kind of like a, a mossy green, kind of an olivey green, and that is not what this green here is serving. This is a little closer to emerald. And this blue, <laughs> this blue made me nervous, but I loved wearing this palette. I loved it so much. Um, this darker shade here is like a tealy green. It's fabulous. I feel like the really special part of this palette are these kind of mid-toned, kind of green, kind of blue leaning, these kind of, what are they shades? You know, um, this is the, the one that's that green in the middle right here. But I, it looks more green in the pan and here it looks so much softer. Um, this one right here is um, kind of what looks like this metallic silver right here, but it looks almost like a minty green. There's something so special and transformative about these shades. And the minute you start layering them, you get an eye look you never expected to get. That's why I love this. This was the color story that had me like the most excited, but I was like, I don't wear green. I don't wear blue. I, what am I going to do with this? And I was like, well, let's just trust that Lisa knows what she's talking about purchase it and see for ourselves. Oh my goodness. It's probably my favorite one out of all of them. But these shades right here, 
just make my heart happy. And yes, I have used the blue, and yes, I will continue to use the blue. I picked this up during the Sephora sale because I've been looking for something that's gonna keep my face set while I'm at work. I work at a dentist's office, I'm wearing a mask all day. Uh, even though people aren't wearing masks for pandemic reasons, at the dentist, I'm in a mask every time I'm in with a patient. And I was sick of taking my mask off and seeing two little trails, like where the ear loops go up and around my ears and kind of a rectangular space here where there was less makeup or sometimes no makeup. So I wear only powder products on the days that I'm headed to work. I set my whole face and I use powder blush, bronzer, highlight, because that gives me an extra layer of, you know, stayability. And then I add this to it. This is really great. The Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. It has a really nice, light, very diffused mist. This is great. This has a slight scent to it. It also ends up kind of making everything that's powdery kind of melt into the skin. I will tell you, I work three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. By Friday, I can tell my skin's a little bit dry. I find, and maybe it's only because we're heading into the colder months and my skin is really starting to be affected by the weather, um, but this, I feel like by the end of three days of using this, I don't know that I could use this every day. But for work days, this has been a godsend. Because the other day I was so curious, I took my mask off at lunch and the only mark on the inside was a little bit of lipstick. I was wearing kind of like a glossy hydrating situation and there was a little smudge of that and there wasn't any makeup on the inside. I was so excited. So this is great for a kind of set your face in place. But I do find that it is just a little bit drying if I use it, you know, every day, but this has been fantastic. I have a lot of lip products to show you. Um, I'm gonna start with these two here. I purchased all five of Lisa's new True Velvet lipsticks, and these are the two that I found myself reaching for the most since they've arrived. I'm not saying that I don't like the other ones, that I don't love the other ones, because I think they're all just gorgeous. And depending on what sort of look I'm building, decides what lipstick I go for in the end, but these are the ones that I have been reaching for the most. And the first one is a red, and it's not the red you probably are thinking of. Um, this is Velvet Enchantment, and this is what she's calling like her failed fairy tale red. It's the red for people who don't wear red. <laughs> and I was like, I wear red lipstick, I wear lipstick this color, but I love this so much because it has a little bit of pink, it has a little bit of brown to it. It's kind of like a rosier red, and I think you can see a little bit more of the warmth in here. I wouldn't say it's an orangey red, but there's something about this that just makes it super wearable. I love this formula, it's matte, but it's not drying. It has a little bit of hydration and creaminess to it. I'm not saying it's like a lip balm, like hydrating, but my lips don't feel dry and abused by the end of the day. The other shade that I fell in love with is this one. This one is Velvet Sorcery. This one is so pretty. So it's a darker nude shade. When it's sheared out, it has just a little hint of rose to it. So it actually is also super wearable. You can wear like a full on, like heavy duty, dark swatch of it, or you can blend it out and it has a little bit more warmth and ease of wear. I think both of these are fabulous. I know this one is sold out, but Velvet Enchantment is absolutely stunning. I like all of the five new shades she released, but these are the two that I've reached for the most. Um, something else that is similar but different is this. This is Kaja's new lip product. This is called Love Swipe. This is a matte liquid lipstick that's moussey, that's hydrating, that doesn't dry down. It's not gonna be dry and flaky or crusty and crumbly. And this shade is so pretty. Oh, I love this shade. This is called Adore You. This is one of those that's really great for kind of like a blotted, blurred lip. It's so pretty, but it's so comfortable. So comfortable. And I remember the days of the KVD um, liquid lipsticks, of the ColourPop liquid lipsticks, of the Dose of Colors. I know people really love those formulas still to this day. They are too drying on my lips. The older I get, the less my lips can handle a drying formula. I need something that's comfortable. I still love a matte appearance on the lips, but it has to bring some hydration to the table or I am not gonna wear it. This is so good. This is very similar to another product that I tried this month. This is new from M Cosmetics. This is their soft-spoken 
uh, is it a velvet lip cream? I forget the exact title of it, but it's so good. First of all, the applicator. It's fantastic because it's like a finger. Let me, let me just throw a little bit of this on. I just wiped off most of my uh, Swiss Miss. But the tip of this is so great because I feel like I can get right to the edge of my lip without having problems. Now, they sent this shade to me, this and another one. And this is the one that I've been wearing the most. This is the shade Tender. This is a shade that I found that both of my kids were swiping. And I was like, no, I want my lipstick back. This formula is really great for kind of blurring out the edge. So this shade is not the right shade to wear with the eye makeup that I'm wearing today, but it feels so good on the lips. My favorite thing about this, aside from the formula, because the formula is perfect, is this applicator. And they designed it to kind of work like your finger so you could, you know, be blurring. You could use one side or the other. My favorite part is that it's leaf shaped and it comes to a point. And that point actually allows me to get a really defined look like right at the edge. The other thing that I like about this is that there are a lot of doe foots out there that have a lot of velvet on them and the velvet is a little bit longer. And with a really pigmented shade of liquid lipstick as you're kind of putting it on, sometimes the velvet will splay out and it's like a little hair that drags color out of where I want it to be. I've never had that problem with this. So not only the sh that leaf shape, that, that little kind of point that really lets me almost like line my lips with it, um, but also the fact that the velvet is not too long. The formula is so comfortable, so comfortable. I like both shades I have in this, but the shade here in Tender is the one I've been reaching for the most. The other shade I have is more of like a hot strawberry shade. This one is called Flutter, and it's really pretty as well, but it's definitely it's a little punchier. It's not really a red. It is kind of more like a strawberry shade, but um, yeah, it's... It's a bolder look, but this formula is fantastic. I know that it's back in stock. I definitely need to let you know that these were sent to me in PR from M, but this is the sort of product that I'm gonna go back when they expand their shade range, because here's hoping that they do. I want a bright, bold red. I want kind of more like a softer caramel shade, almost like a, a, a soft beigey shade. I want more of a pinky nude. And I feel like the six shades they have right now are really pretty, but I want a little bit more. I want more options. And this is another product that I would pick up for sure. And, and I'm definitely gonna have to get this one in tender, like a couple more of these, one for each of my kids because they <laughs> are forever running off with mine. Remember how I told you I really like this gloss and glow from Burt's Bees? I have been using this so much. This is the shade Eat, Drink, and Be Cherry. This month I've been using this nonstop because look how pretty it is. It's shiny, it's glossy, it's comfortable. I did something though, I made a purchase from Ulta and I picked up another one and this one is called Chai Time. Oh my goodness. Here's Chai Time, it's more of a nude, but it has kind of like a, I don't know, like a rose leaning nude to it. So pretty, so pretty. These are the sorts of products I like to keep in my scrubs at work. This, this, um, I'll use one of the Lisa Eldridge, um, luxuriously lucent lipsticks, sheer, lightweight, comfortable. These are so fantastic, but this one here, I mean, I've been using it so much. You see how the label is coming up? I can't stop using this. And the other thing that's funny is I've had it for less than two weeks and I'm already like down to here. I've used probably a quarter of it already in two weeks. With all the other lip products I have, this has been like on repeat in my scrubs pocket at work, love so much. This is one of the products I picked up during the Sephora sale. This is the With Gratitude Dewy Lip Balm from Rare Beauty. And I have the shade Compliment. Okay, this is fantastic. First of all, it's magnetic closure. That's what we got going on here, I love that. I also love the shape of it, it looks like an old school mailbox. I know that's silly, but it makes me happy. This is not as shiny as the lip serum from Makeup by Mario or the lip cushions from M, but it has a similar feel to it where it's a glossy, shiny, hydrating lip balm. I feel like it has a little bit more of a lipstick quality that's a little bit thicker. It has a little bit more pigment to it. I definitely feel that's what's going on with this compared to some of those other glossy balm type products. These are the sort of products that they remind me of, of the Sheer Slicks from e.l.f., the Lip Cushion from M, 
the Makeup by Mario, is it Lip Serum, the Honest Beauty Tinted Lip Balm, and the Ultra Lip from Glossier. I feel like out of all of these, this one is kind of the closest because the formula of this is definitely a little bit more pigmented, but it's a little glowier. Um, I feel like the Makeup by Mario can be a little bit sheerer, but it's also like crazy glossy compared to the one from Rare. Um, I feel like the one from M Cosmetics, the lip cushion, I really love all of these formulas, is definitely just a little bit shinier and depending on the shade you get, maybe a little bit sheerer. And then these guys are like super sheer, like hardly any color, uh, very nourishing but very lightweight on the lips. And um, the Sheer Slicks from e.l.f. Again, very sheer and lightweight. This has, I think that when you put it on, it has the most pigment out of any of these. Because I've already blurred that with my finger, but that's what it looks like going on. So it is shiny, but it's not the shiniest. And it has a little bit more pigment. And I don't know if it's because I got the deepest shading compliment or whether it's just the formula overall, but I have been reaching for it a lot. I mean, a lot. I actually did wear it at work underneath my mask and it didn't get too out of hand. It didn't get too crazy. It still looked nice. It was you know, blurry around the edge, um, but it's glowy and it's hydrating and it just feels good going on. This is the sort of product where even though it is a little bit more of a deeper shade, this is definitely one that I put on without a mirror. Like I could just It's easy. <laughs> And it's not one of those where I'm too worried about what happens when it like doesn't stay exactly where I put it. I'm not saying that it trails out, but when I'm wearing it under my mask at work, it does end up where I don't want it. Um, Cause the mask just shifts back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but it doesn't ever really look too cuckoo. I have really been liking this. All right, let me share with you the products that didn't work for me this month. Oh, one of them's a lip product that I really, really wanted to love. And it's this. It's one of the new shades of Generation G from Glossier. I don't know how it is that with my love of things like Balm.com, the Ultra Lip, the Boy Brow, that I had never tried one of their flagship products. This Generation G product is like, they hung, they hung their hat on this. This is so fantastic. I think this was the first makeup product. Was this the first makeup product they came out with? I think it might have been. But the idea behind this is that it is a matte, blotted lip. This is the shade Fuzz right here. And this is what everybody else has based their blotted lip on. <laughs> now I know that um, Korean Beauty has been doing a blotted lip for a long time, but I'm saying here in the United States, I remember when ColourPop came out with blotted lips, it was after this debuted. I remember when other brands had more of a kind of blurred out, not quite as intense, kind of soft, worn in, kissable lipstick they were trying to dupe this because these were wildly popular. Now, I think this color is fantastic. I love this color in Fuzz, oh my goodness. But the problem I have with this, this dries my lips out. I wanna wear it, I wanna love it, but I can only wear it when I pair it with this. Because on its own, when it looks fully matte, in two hours, my lips are like, dry like a desert. And four hours later, they're flaking and peeling. I don't know what it is about this formula. There's not enough emollient products in here to keep my lips happy. It looks good like this, and I will wear it this way because I really like this color. And I feel like this color is also similar to like this um, Swiss Miss when it is sheared out. So here is Swiss Miss and here is Fuzz. Beautiful colors, so wearable, so beautiful. But I would never buy another Generation G lipstick. Um, here's where I'll tell you, at almost 48, the older I get, the drier everything gets. My under eyes, my cheeks, the corners of my nose, my lips. And maybe a decade ago, I would have been able to wear this no problem. I just can't wear it now. Maybe it'd be easier in the summertime when it's not cold and uh, I'm dealing with like hot forced air coming through the heater in the car, in the house, and the portable heater that I take with me from room to room. Um, maybe it'll be easier. I'll try it again but I love the shade. I think this new expanded shade range, they came out with three new shades is great. 
wanted to love it, just didn't work for me. The other product that didn't work for me is this. This is from KVD. This is the Tattoo Pencil Liner. I just got their traditional black shade in Trooper. Um, it starts out really nice and sharp, and of course, like any pencil, like twist up pencil liner, the more you use it, the duller it gets. I could take um, a little pencil sharpener like this that comes on some of the ends of my super inexpensive uh, makeup products and sharpen it, and I've done that before, um, but I really was hoping that this would be the sort of pencil that I could put it in my upper waterline, and when it's set, I blink it not transferred to my lower. Sadly, that's not the case. So that's why this is a fail for me. Is it a good black liner? Yes. Does it glide nicely? Yes. Does it stay on my upper waterline really well? Yes. It's hard to get like a little flick out of it when it's this dull. So that's when I need to like give it a little sharpen to get like a perfect little flick. And it works great above my lash line, but if you're using this for tight lining, I only uh, tight line my upper waterline when I'm blinking. I will get transferred to my lower waterline and then I start looking uh, a little bit panda-y. And then sometimes there'll be a place in my upper waterline where I put something that now there isn't. So I don't know that I would say this is great for tight lining unless you're tight lining your upper and your lower waterline. This might be great for that, but it is a really nice, you know, black gel pencil that glides. It's just not working for the purposes I want. I find the best things for my upper waterline are the gel liner pencils from Beauty Pie or um, the Inglot AMC liner, the gel potted liner. If I put that in my waterline, it's not going anywhere. Other things that have been bringing me joy, first of all, this sweater. I finished this um, on Thanksgiving and look at the sleeves. Look how fabulous they are with the long cuffs and everything. Oh, this is something I made myself. Um, I designed the pattern myself as well. I started, you know, crocheting all the parts and I had to rip everything out twice to get it just the way I wanted it. Is it exactly what I was hoping for? No, but it's pretty close. What I love this is because it's like a wearable blanket. I made one of these sweaters out of this yarn last year. It's in kind of like a mid-toned gray color and I wore it so much. It's starting to like there's like little flat patches where like my elbows are resting on the table or on the car rest, you know, armrest in the car. But um, I loved it so much. I quit wearing like my wool coats and was just wearing my gray sweater. I was like, ooh, I want a red one. And then I want fun sleeves. So I took the time to make the sweater and I've been loving it. Other things I have been loving, ooh, my family and I have been enjoying sitting down and watching Lego Masters. My family, my kids grew up loving Lego. A lot of kids in their generation are just in love with Lego. and if you are my age, I'm almost 50, I'm 48 years old um, in January. Um, my brother and I also grew up all the time, Lego, 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 but that's before they had Lego for girls. There was no Lego friends. There were no things that were themed towards, you know, little girls. It was, a lot of it was very little boy driven, you know, castles and cars and space. <laughs> and I really missed out on the Lego generation because there was nothing that I saw that was themed for me but my brother loves it. And I, I think that since everybody, every age range in my house has a nostalgic memory with Lego, my husband and me from like the late seventies, early eighties, and then my girls, because they grew up with all the Lego friends and everything else, we just love sitting down and watching that show together. And it's so great to see people of all ages and experiences building creatively together. Love that. I've also been loving your support. Uh, on Thanksgiving Day, I uploaded a video and I noticed right around like late afternoon Pacific time that my channel crossed over 5,000 subscribers. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. I have been loving that. That is definitely one of my favorite things. Um, and I'm so, so grateful for your support, for your interaction, for your comments, for making time to watch my content, to share it with other people. That just means the world to me. So that is definitely one of my favorites this month. Thank you so, so much for that. I will leave it there. I, you know me, I could keep chatting, but if you're like, we've already had a snack, got up for a drink, been watching it at times too, and you're still talking. So I'm gonna stop right here. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you again soon.